Hello everyone, it's George and welcome back to Call of Dragons. As a dedicated free-to-play player who played this game for 11 months, I'm excited to share some insider tips and tricks with you. Stick around and let's dive in. Finally, we are getting some new updates in Call of Dragons, new patch is coming to the town, some new updates, some bug fixes, some hero changes and lot of tricks uh, which gonna be added into the game. I have not read it by myself, um, I, will, I will read it with you guys and let's see what kind of changes we are going to expect from the developers of the game and how they are changing the game in general, which is pretty interesting. Let's dive in, okay? So the patch name is Anniversary Celebrations and as always um, Anniversary Celebrations are coming, uh, we already know that it will be a one year since the, uh, develop, since the beginning of this game, since the launch. So we're gonna have a lot of events, a lot of rewards, um, as we can see, uh, we're gonna have a 14 day series of fantastic events, some city themes, avatar frames and name templates, which is pretty usual, like almost every single uh, new update like this has something like this, right? Uh, carnival party, celebrate your anniversary and gain amazing events, sign in, which means that every time you're gonna sign into the game for 7 days straight, you're gonna, you're gonna get some rewards, which is pretty cool, especially for free to play players, some anniversary gifts, uh, claim your gem bundle as a token of our thanks, like free rewards without do doing anything, it's always a great thing to have uh, in games, in Kingdom Builder games. Magical memories, I guess we're gonna have like a book or some, some journal um, regarding our past seasons and past performances, which is pretty cool. I have seen it in many different games and uh, I was waiting for something like this here. Great hates, um, like amid countless trials, surprise your boundaries, ascend glory and become the living legend. Uh, lucky flip, like something like lucky spins, I guess, like try your luck and win some amazing prizes. So like we are getting great free rewards, great free events uh, without spending in the game, uh, which is absolutely amazing. It's been pretty uh, boring uh, these couple of months in the game so finally we are getting some new events it was time uh, for us to get this anniversary because a couple of days ago i checked uh, how long uh, it has been since the launching of the call of dragons and i think at 24 or 28 march it will be the one year that's why i was kind of waiting for this anniversary celebration uh, events for us which they delivered and we need to say thanks for that the smooth route of prosperity, here will be some changes which game will get. Uh, season 2 plus is now referred to as season B1, I'm not sure why they are changing the name every single uh, patch and every single season. Improved the season 2 map, uh, players entering season 2 will be able to join uh, in all new map once the update is complete. Yeah, like updating the map, updating the features of the map is a pretty usual concept of Call of Dragons, which is not surprising for me. Uh, the new update about the alliances will be that every single uh, player will understand if alliance is inactive or active. If it's inactive and you're gonna apply for them, the system will tell you that alliance uh, leader or uh, officers are not playing the game as usual and you should be notified beforehand about that. Uh, improved season talent quests in season TI, that's I guess the uh, new talents which we are getting to season TI. Uh, my server will enter to season TI in 10 hours, so I'm pretty excited. Mm, uh, the range assault is now named Bat Battle Accuracy. I'm not sure if I read it correctly. Uh, change this in certain policies and technologies, and that's important. Policies are related to gems. Um, gem gathering is now increasing your uh, command point uh, recovery speed, which means like uh, gem gathering uh, talents was always useless, uh, and we're gonna get additional benefits as H SP recovery speed is a great thing to have. Uh, that's the uh, currency of movement in the game, so not bad. The technology gem gathering has now been added. Uh, removed alliance tech, tech and re related to speed and destroying the barricades. I have not seen barricades at all. And it will be re uh, replaced by just simply increasing the gathering speed for all resources. Amazing addition. Especially for free-to-play players who are lacking some resources during the game. Uh, it will be beneficial for us. 
uh, removed policies related to new server openings in season one uh, that's the update for players who are just starting the game now this change will only take effect effect on a newly opened season one servers uh, per level elixir production and daily resource healing has been increased for hospital buildings on all servers that's like the update which i have been crying about like every time i was fighting against tier 5 players that like hospital is not enough in order for us to have fun in order to us to enjoy the battle which is the best battle gameplay in all kingdom builder games finally we will have a more elixirs which means we're gonna have more chance to participate in wars and that's like so far the best um, uh, change in the uh, patch notes currently we have Improve the unit promotion. After you successfully promote units, your, your previous choice will be retained the next time you open the unit training page, allowing you to more easily promote large number of units. Well, I remember when I was starting the game and I had uh, tier 1, tier 2, tier 3 units, it was pretty boring and pretty time-consuming uh, to promote those uh, unit types to tier 4 uh, which finally will be a lot more easier because we will be able to choose the large amount of uh, units and they will be promoted uh, in a bunch that's a great um, update in my opinion so uh, second favorite update first one was about elixirs and second one about promotion of the tiers of the units great stuff uh, i'm pretty happy so far even as even richer combat experience, the combat experience in Call of Dragons is the best I have ever seen in Kingdom Builder games. Uh, and let's see how they are going to improve it even more. Uh, improved sorting feature for heroes, artifacts and warpes, adding the ability to sort items in ascending and descending order. Well, it's just UI changes, easy to understand, some interface changes, like this won't gonna have a huge effect to the game. Improve the auto-positioning system for melee and range legions. Legions will now position themselves more naturally when marching in groups. Well, in general, marching was buggy um, in Call of Dragons. Like, you sometimes may get too stuck. You are not moving, uh, especially if there is a large amount of legions on the battlefield. It was pretty rough. Thankfully, they are changing it. It will be much easier to move around with your legions, which is pretty good change. Improved Legion marching, as I said, um, legions, uh, legions will now more freely, uh, fr more move freely when trying to enter nearby buildings or cities. Again, I just mentioned why it was so bad, and I guess they understood that uh, if battle uh, and fighting is so good in game, um, unit movement should be even better, right? It's easier to do, I guess. I'm not the game developer. Uh, in the interest of balance, the following changes have been made to a hero uh, and artifact skills. I guess they literally changed uh, the Tohar skills and almost every single Tohar skills. Uh, currently, my kingdom is not in season TI, which means I don't have uh, Tohar available, but in 10 uh, hours I will be able to see it. I don't have like, like much information about Tohar, but I will still read it. Like the main changes was like uh, previously after every five normal attacks, Tohar was channeling the plateau, which was was dealing some damage, um, and now it got changed um, after launching three normal attacks. I guess the plateau will be cast uh, like even more because you will need uh, two less normal attacks to do it. Uh, also uh, dealing damage to the target every second for three seconds, but here was five seconds. I guess they lowered the damage but they made it easier to channel it in general. Uh, the damage factor uh, was increased, uh, actually, but they reduced the uh, seconds which will this uh, spell be cast. Uh, if a hero in Tohar's Legion casts a rage skill, the cooldown ends immediately. Uh, change Tohar's skill plateau protection previously while channeling rage of plateau Tohar Legion gains underlying and shelter. Uh, now, uh, when Tohar begins channeling Rage of Plateau, his Legion gains Unlying and Shelter for 5 seconds. Well, these 5 seconds, they increased the timing, uh, also some defense uh, addition, like, you are getting more tankier you know, whenever you are channeling your main skill, that's the main idea. Uh, like, underlying counter-attack damage taken, minus 15% uh, is maximum. <coughs> 
the shelter defense is 35% uh, the maximum. Uh, previously, after Tohara finishes channeling Rage of Plateau, his Legion gains Keen for 3 seconds. Uh, for 35%, which is a lot of amount of percentage attack, uh, actually. And it got changed after Tohar finishes channeling Rage of Plateau, his Legion gains Keen uh, for 5 seconds. Basically, they changed some of the uh, mechanics of the hero. Uh, some of them like was uh, time-consuming, and they removed like a normal attack, uh, timings, and in general, I think... Uh, until you won't gonna get Tohar, it will be just words for you. Uh, I guess um, these changes will be more informative for players uh, who are already in Season TI. That's why I'm not gonna go in deep inside the Tohar's play kit because I don't have and I simply can't even see the hero currently in 10 hours. Yes, but now um, I mean, I'm still in Season 2+. plus. Uh, engineering talent Barakat destroyed has been replaced by hard hats previously. Uh, by increasing engineering by 200% when your legion destroys a barricade, which got changed, your legion gains 10% enemy attack mitigation when building or destroying buildings in the field. Great change, it was very very easy to destroy builders which were attacking or destroying the towers or any buildings. Nice change, it was necessary in my opinion. Uh, improved description for engineering uh, in sk skills and talents. I guess they are changing the name. Reduce the difficulty to certain Dragon Dragon Trail stages. I'm not sure. Dragon Trail is pretty easy already. Like almost every single patch, they are uh, making it easier and easier and easier to uh, move forward in Dragon Trail. I did a skip review featuring uh, certain Dragon Trail stages. Uh, like fixed some Tohar skills. And here I like to fix it an issue when uh, enabling, enabling artifact skill autocast would cause you to attack enemies in the field other than your current target, uh, which was like pretty important bug uh, actually. And like since the introduction of autocast, I have been pretty happy about it because uh, like uh, whenever you are using five legions uh, and there is like 100 person versus 100 person war, it's better to uh, your artifacts to be used in an automatical way, in my opinion. Uh, more enjoyable events, you can now skip an old animations in Lucky Spins or Wheels of Destiny. Uh, you can now use wounded units in Celestial Battlegrounds or Trial of Lights. Uh, and generally, they made the events more accessible, more easier. Some cutscenes got uh, cut. Uh, and improved alliance systems. Following player feedback, we have made changes to certain alliance officer privileges. Des designated alliance officers uh, can now appoint other members, remove certain alliance buildings and alliance members' personal buildings, and recall alliance members' uh, legions from behemoth liars. Well, this behemoth stuff is great because I have been playing this game from season 1 and... Still, a lot of people fall asleep during the behemoth fights or even when we're gonna capture it. So, pretty cool change, no, not like game changer. The new stories will be added to the game, which gonna mean new emojis, new um, like gems, which gonna get rewards after the stories, which is pretty cool for a free-to-play player because any kind of rewards which you're gonna get from this game is important for you because you are not paying any money in this game. Uh, other improvements, uh, improved unit appearances for Wilderberg, actually good, I'm happy because I'm thinking of changing my faction to Wilderberg, and they kind of lacked the theme and the beautiness or like some their own identity, let's see how it will be uh, done, pretty interesting. Uh, also, they added the server hotspot feature. Once observing other servers becomes available on your server, you can enable these features on map to see where the most active areas are. Easily uh, observable, like they are making us um, easier to see what's happening in other kingdoms. Uh, fixed an issue with displaying levels for enemies during Season 2, Season Story. You can now view the resource source of unobtained artifacts, uh, improved user experience for selling warped skills, it's now more difficult to carry out an action by mistake 
which is great. A lot of people made the same mistake about these war pits, and like whenever they are making easier for us every single item or every single action, it's better for the game in general. So far, there was like couple of important updates, uh, like Tohar changes. I'm not the expert in that. That's why I did not speak deeply about Tohar. Uh, because I'm not playing in season TI and I can't see the hero in general. Uh, but other than that, I really like the uh, gems and SP recovery speed, also resource gathering, um, also some... Like, I'm not sure why they are changing every time the names of the seasons, but okay, it's fine. Uh, some policy changes, and also, in my opinion, main and most important change here is about elixir production. Uh, like, we are, we are lacking more elixir because every time I'm fighting, I want to fight more. And if you're gonna have more elixirs, uh, that means you are going to fight even more. Uh, this is all we're gonna get from the anniversary celebration um, event, which I have been waiting for a while. I guess it was a good time because in like two weeks or one week, we're gonna like Call of Dragons will be one year old. And uh, let's see how far this game will go. Uh, first year was pretty good. I will not say that the first year, year was bad or like game was lacking stuff. If I will remember other games first year, Call of Dragons is pretty, pretty far. Yep, I, that's all I wanted to talk, I wanted to discuss the changes with you, uh, and in general I don't have any scripts while making videos, I only click on start uh, recording and I speak whatever comes on my mind, that's why you might hear sometimes ah uh, or like some noises whenever I'm thinking what to say. Uh, thanks for watching, I hope you're enjoying the content, enjoying the videos, if you are press like, uh, share, comment and subscribe, it always gives me more and more motivation to continue doing the uh, the videos for you guys thanks for watching i'm gonna see you very very soon bye bye